Hi. Now, we're quite often asked to work out the integral of, say, some function of x with respect to x, going between the limits x equals a and x equals b. And we should be familiar with the fact that this represents the area contained between the curve y equals f of x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals a and x equals b. So this is equal to the area. Now, working out this integral of f of x dx sometimes can be quite difficult to do, to get the exact value. So what would be a good idea would be if we could get an approximation to this. Well, that would mean getting an approximation to the area. And in the past, I showed you that we could get an approximation to the area by the trapezium rule, which was a method where we divided this interval up into strips of equal width. Let's just put a few in here, okay? And we'll say that that width that we start to divide this up into was of width h. And we would carry this on throughout this interval from here to here. Now, it's obviously the number of strips depends on the width and how wide it is from a to b. So there's going to be quite a lot of strips in here. So we'll just ignore the other strips that would be in a general diagram, okay? But then we would get towards the end here and we would have our final strip. Let's just mark that width there as h. So even though I've got on display here one, two, three strips, there's clearly going to be a lot of strips in between. Now with the trapezium rule, we got an approximation to that area by joining the tops of these strips with a straight line and then adding together the area of each of the trapeziums. And we got, as I say, the trapezium rule. But by joining the tops with a straight line, obviously we're losing a little bit of area. So what we have now is Simpson's rule. It's a better rule than the trapezium rule because with Simpson's rule, instead of joining the tops with straight lines, we now join them with a parabola. And that's going to be a closer fit to the curve than with a straight line. Now the proof of Simpson's rule is not what I'm here to do, okay? We're just going to quote the formula and I'll do a few examples, show you how easy it is to use. Now to use Simpson's rule, what we must have is an even number of intervals. And we label the first height of this interval y0. The next height would be y1, and the next one y2, and so on. And then the last height is always yn. The one before would be yn minus 1. Now if we take an even number of strips, then if we look at the subscripts against the y values, we take 0 as an even value. So we'll talk about that height there as being the even one. And then we've got y1, 1 being an odd value. So we take this height as being odd. And then y2, even, and so on, all the way through our diagram. If we've got an even number of strips, this last one will always end on an even value. n will always be even. The one before then will be odd. Now, Simpson's rule as I say, I'm not giving it with any proof, was this. That the integral of f of x from x equals a to x equals b integrated with respect to x is equal to the width of our interval divided by 3. And then you work out the first height, that's this value here, plus 4 times the sum of the odd heights plus twice the sum of the even heights, plus the last height. And we can only do this if the number of intervals 
is even. Now the best way of illustrating this though is if we do a couple of examples. So the first example is to get an approximation to the integral going from 0 to 12 of the square root of 1 plus x squared. And we're integrating this with respect to x. Now, in a question, they'll normally tell you how many intervals to take. And in this one, what I'm going to do is we'll take four intervals. So I'm just going to draw a little sketch over here just to illustrate what's happening. Now, I would encourage you to draw a sketch, in fact, but I'm often told, well, I don't know what the graph would look like. Well, the point is, nor do I necessarily know what a graph's going to look like. So what I do is just draw some kind of curve. It doesn't really matter. But what we've got here is we're trying to find the area bounded by the curve and the values of x equaling 0 and 12. So we'll just mark those in there. So let's just put a line down there. And if we're looking to split this up into four intervals, then we're going to have one there, halfway between 0 and 12, which is 6. There'll be one here, and there'll be one here. And that will be 3, and that will be 9. So you can see that the width of our strip is going to be 3 units. Now what I would do is take this one then, the first value, the first height, is my even one. So I'll just write even there, odd there, even, odd, and even. Rather than writing it as y0, y1, y2, y3, y4. Again, that's up to you though, but I do prefer this way because we've got Simpson's rule written in this format. So, applying Simpson's rule, this integral... We're not going to give the exact value, we're just going to give the approximate value, so I'm just doing a wavy line like that, is going to be the width of the interval divided by 3. The width of the interval is 3 units, so we'll just write that in green there just to highlight that as the width. And we're dividing it by 3. And then I'll set up a square bracket here, and then we work out the first height. And so this will be when x is 0. We substitute it into here and we get the root of 1 plus 0. The root of 1, which is going to be 1. And to this, we add 4 times the sum of the odd heights. So it's going to be 4 multiplied by the sum of the odd heights. Now, in this particular example, we've only got two odd heights. This one here and this one here. This one here is when x equals 3. So if we substitute 3 into here, we've got the root of 1 plus 3 squared, the root of 1 plus 9, the root of 10, the root of 10. And to this, we add what we get when we substitute x equals 9 into here. So that's going to be the root of 1 plus 9 squared. That's going to be the root of 82. So square root of 82. So I've done 4 times the sum of the odd heights. Now we need to do plus 2 times the sum of the even heights. So plus 2 times the sum of the even heights. And we've only got one even height here in between the first height and the last height. So this is when x is 6. Substituted in here and you've got the root of 1 plus 6 squared. The root then of 1 plus 36 becoming the root of 37. Now lastly, we've got to add the last height. So the last height is when x equals 12. Put it in here, and we've got the root of 1 plus 12 squared. And that comes out to the root of 145. OK, so all we need to do is just square that bracket off. And get on the calculator and work it out. And what we find is that this turns out to be approximately then 
zero, seven, seven, and so on. And we could then give it to any degree of accuracy that was asked for in the question. Okay, well, I hope that's given you an idea on that one. I'd like to do another one which will show off some other features. So we'll just underline that, okay? Now in the next question, I want you to estimate the integral from 0 to pi of 1 all divided by x plus cos x. Integrating that with respect to x using two intervals. So we're just out to get an approximation, not the exact value of this. So if you'd like to try this, give you a moment, just pause the video and have a go. Come back when ready and check your work solution with mine. But you've got to take care on something like this. I'm not saying what it is just at the moment, but uh, as I say, I'll run through that uh, when you come back. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, first of all, what I'd want to do is just draw up a quick sketch. Not that you have to do this, as I pointed out earlier, but I do believe that it just helps you to set up the problem, really, more than anything else. I'll draw any curve. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's not really representative of this. And we're trying to find the area bounded between x equals 0 and x equals pi. And we're splitting this into two intervals. So I'll put an interval down here, and I can clearly see that this is going to be pi divided by 2. So the width of our interval or strip is going to be h, and h is going to be pi over 2. I want to label these heights going from here to here. There's three heights, in fact. This one is our even height, this one is our odd height, and this one is our even height. So let's just set down the integral first of all. We'll just say that we're integrating then from naught to pi the integral of 1 over x plus cos x, and we're integrating with respect to x. So what is this going to be roughly equal to? Well, according to Simpson's rule, it's the width of the strip, or interval, divided by 3. And the width is pi upon 2. I'll just write that again in green there, just to illustrate that. Pi upon 2, and we're dividing this by 3, OK? h over 3. Then we multiply this with the first height. And for the first height, this will be here when x equals 0. And when x equals 0, we're going to have 1 divided by 0 plus the cosine of 0. In fact, this is not too difficult to work out, but I'll just leave it like that anyway. Next is going to be plus 4 times the sum of the odd heights. But in this one, we've only got one odd height, okay? So it's just going to be 4 times the result that we have when we substitute pi upon 2 into our formula here. So it's going to be 1 divided by pi upon 2 plus cosine of pi upon 2. And that's going to be the end of that one. And then it says plus 2 times the sum of the even heights. And that's between the first height and the last height. But you'll notice that in this one, we haven't got any even heights in between the first and the last. So we just have to leave that part blank. Then we go on to the last height. So we plus the last height, which is when we substitute pi into here. So we're going to have 1 divided by pi plus the cosine of pi. And then we just close that off like so. Now what you've got to be careful with in questions like this one is that you're dealing with trigonometric functions. And what we've got here is the angle is measured in radians. OK, so you've got to make sure that your calculator then is in radians mode. And on that assumption, if you work this out, you should find that you get 
0, 1 and so on. Okay, and you could just round this up then to any accuracy that uh, was requested. So when you're doing these kind of questions, they'll tell you how many intervals to take generally, okay? If not, you can decide, make sure though you take an even number of intervals. And I would always encourage you anyway to just draw some kind of sketch so that you can work out your widths quite easily and just see which one's the even and the odd and the even strips, etc. Okay, so uh, I hope that's given you an idea and that you'll be able to use these examples to uh, work out further ones. All right.